Why do I do that? Kurt was struggling. He was averaging about 38 to 41 putts per 18 holes, and he was shooting in the high 80s. A person who shoots in the high 80s is only going to hit about six or seven greens per round. So I would think a good number of putts for him to have would be 30 to 32. So if if I have him down to, I say, 30, 30 putts and he shoots 88 with 41 putts, that's 11 shots I've taken off his game without changing his golf swing. And 11 off of 88 is 77. And I don't think Kurt would be upset one single second if he came came back with a 77. Absolutely not. Every major golf ball company places their logo, their t like titleist, or their type of golf ball, like professional, in a straight line. So one of the things I like to get people to do is to use their logo as an aiming device so that when he sets his putter in here, this putter's got a sweet spot line. And if he could line that sweet spot line up to the, to the logo, he now is sure that he has aimed where he wants to aim. And now if he just takes the stroke back straight back and straight through, and he read it properly, the putt should go in every single time. This is a no full approach way to get that ball to go in the hole. To line up the logo to your intended target line, set the putter face square to the line, straight back, straight through. Perfect. Why do I do that? What generally Harry and I work on when he comes out here to get ready to play in some events is we work really hard on keeping his body rotating level and keeping his the right knee and the right hip kind of fixed so that it just pivots around and he maintains the flex in his right knee. When Harry first came to me about, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, his swing would straighten up in his right leg a little bit. This would get his body to tilt. So when his swing came back down, it came a little bit over the top, and that would either cause him to hit a pull or a weak fade. And that's what he came to me with, saying, Virgil, sometimes I hit that weak fade, and I don't know where it comes from. And we've been working really hard for about a year and a half. So when Harry sets up to it, he's thinking about maintaining the flex in his right leg here and pivoting that hip. This gives him a level turn. This allows him to maintain the posture in his backswing. And this is a very critical part because when Harry came to me, his right knee would straighten and his right hip would ride up and that would cause a little bit of a tilt and that would make him lose his posture. And when this happened, it would make him come over the top of it just a little bit and that would allow him to hit his two, the two shots that caused him the most trouble, which is a little pull or a high and right shot that flew a little shorter than he intended. So what we've been working on for about a year and a half now is maintaining the flex in the right knee keeping the right hip pivoted, and this allows him to stay in his posture at the top of his backswing. Let's go ahead and hit one for me, Harry. Right knee flexed. Super. So the key is for Harry's golf swing is for Harry to maintain the flex in his right knee and keep his right hip pivoted. This keeps his posture level in the golf swing and allows him to hit the golf ball flush every single time. Harry, it's always a pleasure. Thanks, Bert. Thanks for, thanks for coming out. How do I do that? Today I'm here with Ella Asbin. She plays at Vanderbilt University golf team. And we're going to work on hitting the flop shot. Ella's getting ready to play in some amateur events across the country. And this next current one she's getting ready to play has greens that are elevated. So we want to work on getting the golf ball up and landing it soft. So to play the lob shot or the flop shot, a couple of things we want to do. The first thing you want to do is you want to grab the most lofted club in your bag. And in Ella's case, she's got a 60-degree lob wedge. The second thing we're going to talk about, we're going to open up the stance and open up the club face. So go ahead and set up, set up to it for me. The club face, she's opened it up about maybe 10 degrees, and she's opened her stance up about 10 degrees. We're going to move the ball position just a little forward. And what we're going to concentrate on is making it bounce off the heel and letting the club release underneath the ball. Give it your best effort here. Very good. Very good. As you can see, this is actually a pretty full golf swing. She's going to make a full wind up and make a full finish. 
But because it's already got 60 degrees of loft, and now we're adding 10 to 12 more, it's a 72 degree lofted club. So it's going to shoot the ball straight up into the air and land very softly. So go ahead and give me another one. Pay attention to it, making sure that, make a pretty full swing. Make that heel hit on the ground first. Just like that. Fantastic. Ella, good luck in all your tournaments this summer. Thank you. Why do I do that? What we're going to work on today is when Brant gets going in his backswing, he'll have a tendency to get his arms to move away from his body. And one of the things I like to work on with Brant is to feel like he keeps connected or his arm state just the same distance from his chest from setup to the first part of his backswing especially in the first part of the backswing. I want his chest to take the golf club back and his arms to stay connected to that. Don't want him moving away. So that's why I set the golf club up here like this because if he does it right, it goes right underneath. Yeah, and instead, there's where he goes wrong is the golf club would bang into my shaft here. So we won't even let him have a bad golf swing. We'll be, I'd stop his swing from right here. That's right. Go ahead. Perfect everywhere and that eliminates the big duck hook or the big hook that he's been fighting and when his arms expand away from him that's where he got, starts getting the big pull hook and the draw and that's what good players can't have in their golf in their game is a ball that over hooks so when he keeps the club on plane he hits the golf ball pretty straight to just a little bit of a fade and he's been doing that regularly and I guess that's why he's rated in the top 100 in the country right now <laughs>